Hey coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Couple things, first of all, make sure you subscribe and like. Second thing is go check t -hoops at, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who wanna get better. It is a roadmap of someone that's done this for 30 plus years. Let me help you with that roadmap. I've already done it. I put pictures in my gym. Let me help you uh, spend less time, win more games. Go over and check out teachhoops.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Basketball Coach Unplugged. Very excited to be here. A um, couple things. First of all, I'd like to give a big shout out to our two sponsors. First of all, Dr. Dish, the number one shooting machine on the market. You will not be disappointed with them. Um, we have three of them in our gym. Uh, mentioning Coach Unplugged, High School Hoops, uh, teachhoops.com, uh, Coach Collins, whatever. They'll give you $350 off. That's one of the best deals out there. Also, go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Um, I can't imagine a better time to do it right now. Um, we just added a quarterly um, membership. So there was a demand. I, I, we tried to listen to our, <laughs> our, our, um, our members as much as possible. So go over and check that out. Less than 100 bucks for three months. Great time right now, kind of leading into the summer. Come in, deep dive. Let us help you through this great journey. So today I'm going to talk about offensive spacing. And um, I don't know if you knew, but we did not have a season this year. And a lot of my season was off season or non-season was spent on working on offensive spacing in our offense. And um, we are, I don't, I wouldn't say we're a read and react team, but we, I don't believe in um, a structured offense anymore. I believe in giving uh, players freedom to score. Um, so I wouldn't say we're exactly read and react because we love Rick, but he's got too many, um, too many levels there. So we're probably a little bit of a hybrid between read and react and dribble drive. And, um, anyway, so I thought we could examine and just talk about offensive spacing and some of the principles, you know, offense is about the manipulation of space. Um, if you really think about it, um, and in really, in a bigger sense, so uh, basketball is the manipulation of space. Um, on the offensive end, you're creating space, right? You're you're maybe compacting one side of the court and expanding the other. And then the defensive end, it's about restricting. You know, right? You think about what the pack line does uh, defensively. All it does is basically restrict space. So um, basketball is about spacing. And 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 I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to trademark this, but I've always thought, you know, you, the first sport that a lot of players play when they're little is uh, soccer. And if you think about it, what do all the soccer, when they're really little, they're like this big clump of players just kind of moving around together. If you've ever seen like six or seven year olds play, there's no spacing. So I've always thought that you should come up with like a penny that has like a, um, a flasher on it. When you get too close, it flashes when you're far enough away, you could program it. Anyway, if anybody invents that, I'm going to, I'm trademarking right now, but I've always thought there should be spacing because, you know, think about spacing, there's spacing in soccer, there's spacing in hockey, there's spacing in all these kind of things. Um, so when you think about it, are you, when, when you think about spacing on the offensive end, are you expanding it or are you restricting it? Like, are you overloading a side or are you trying to stay really wide on that? So, um, you know, co coaching offense is really about coaching spacing. Um, it's a, it's, and I, that's, <laughs> I can go on my rant about how the basketball court isn't big enough anymore, but when you're a basketball coach and you're coaching offense, you're coaching spacing. Um, so in a lot of spend, in a lot of sense, if you think about like what I just said about offense and defense, you're really kind of a spacing coach. Um, you're working on whether, you know, where you're positioning it, um, you know, good positioning is staying wide. You know, those five, the, the, the kind of the key five positions, both baselines, the wing and the top of the key. Um, but you, and you want space, you want function, you want to be able to, to, to be able to function and to be able to drive and to be able to have um, those kinds of space. And, and w we always tell, especially on, on a fast break, because you want to think offensively as a fast break, we want, we, we tell our players to stay wide. Um, and really deep on that um, because deep meaning getting to the corners as much as possible, because again, you're pulling the defense apart. You're pulling them to, to, to other, other spaces. Um, so, and, and, and again, think about 
compression of space? Are, you know, are we compressing it or are we expanding it? So if we're compressing, if we're putting overloading aside, what does that do? It expands space on the other side. So imagine a, imagine a court where I have three people on one side and two people on the other. Well, the compression is on the side where the, the overload is, or maybe even four people on one side, one person on the other. And then there's an expansion of space where the person can dribble on the other. So when you're thinking of your offense, when you're thinking of your, oh, another great one is um, think about the low one four. everyone tends to run the low one four. Well, what are you doing? You're compressing, you're compressing space on the baseline and you're creating space for your point guard on the top. Um, so you really have to think about that. And, the way that the way the offenses and things are moving now, just think about um, ball screens. There's so many ball screens going on. Well, you're compressing space there, right? On because you're bringing people together. So that means you need to to kind of expand it in other spaces. So when they come off those screens, they're able to score. Um, so I think the ball screen is a really good thing. And and this is where in the read and react, you think about dribble penetration. When someone dribbles, then there has to be movement, okay? So when you drive, penetration should be to maintain space, but then the other people have to move. So let's imagine a person on the, on the, on the wing of a basketball court driving, I don't know, let's say they're driving baseline. Well, the other four people will have to maintain space around that drive. So if you think about it, it's kind of almost a dance. Um, as, as that person drives baseline, then the other ones have to go and fill the open space. I always tell um, our guys to, to, to run toward the lights, run toward the space. Um, so, you know, you just think about that kind of action that, you know, where is, how are you supporting your teammate and how are you finding specific space when you're driving? So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing, um, a quick thing to show some of this stuff at some point but um let me know if you have any questions and uh, make sure you come over and check us out at teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better it's a great community um nowhere else are you going to get a one-on-one -on -one call there's lots of lots of resources out there but i think it's one of the best so go over and check it out um and have a great day everybody Hey coach, hope you're enjoying the video. If you do, hit like down below. That helps us a ton um, being found on YouTube. Second thing is make sure you go over and check out and subscribe and check out that little bell up above. That will get you notified every time a new video goes up. Um, and then go over and check out teachups.com for coaches who want to get better.